take the beginning of this song and do it. But then we're gonna do the finish. Rough. The way we do. Everybody now. Roll it. Roll it. I need more backup singers. Where are you? Come on up and roll with me. Where are they? Listen to the story. No more backup singers. Where are they? Come on up. I know you got it in you. Come on up. Any more backup singers? Listen to the story. I know you love Tina Turner. Come on up. Yeah. Working for the man. Anybody else? Come on up. And I never lost one minute of sleep. You can come on up here if you want to. Just keep on turning. Rolling and we keep on rolling. And we'll roll. Great leaders do not roll alone. So a big can of thanks to all of my backup singers. Those were the leaders that had the guts to come to the forefront, which is what we must do. We need our friends, our colleagues, our family, our caregivers. They were all up there rolling with me. We can't do it alone. We need you to help us be visible. Can you see me? No. Oh, you're cheating over there to the right. Can you see me? No. Can you see me? No. Are you sure? Can you see me now? No. You can. I am raising and rising to the occasion of leadership. People with disabilities, all people, believe and the opportunity to lead. And even if my technology fails, it still means I step to the fail forefront here. Let me see why it's not raising up. It's not raising up. Just like sometimes in the workplace, we're not raised up. We're not raised up because people don't get behind us. Are you willing to get behind all people in your workplace and help them to lead? Yes. Are you? You've got to be louder than that. Yes. Absolutely. This is what it means to step to the forefront. This is what it means to lead from wherever you are. Can you lead from where you are? All of you internationally out there watching this, nationally out there watching this, can you lead from where you are? Do you need help to lead? Some of us need help to lead. I was at a conference in Chicago with my staff, and a journalist came up to me, and she got on her knees in front of me, and she said, she says, oh my gosh, she said, it takes such courage to be such a beautiful woman with a disability. And my staff member turned around and said, he goes, ma'am, I'm sorry. He said, it doesn't take Juliet courage to be a beautiful woman with a disability. He said, it takes a Visa card, <laughs> a little bit of vanity. And he goes, the fact that she's the boss, she's my boss, the boss. The leader. Could I be the leader? Could you see me as the leader? My staff member did. And I'm encouraged that all of you are here today because you're the champions that see people into leadership. You see their potential and you see their possibilities. And in my travels, I learned from one young lady. One young lady who said to me, she said, Juliet, do you know? what the acronym DISABLED stands for, D-I-S-A-B-L-E-D. Deserving individuals seeking a better life, an education, and a date. <laughs> and while all of 
us as leaders and a date. And I actually have a date here somewhere today. It finally worked in one of my speeches. But end of day, you know, all of us are looking for leadership opportunities and we're looking for all those tools and all that, you know, potential that others can give us. And, you know, sometimes when we're thinking about the diversity in our workplaces, you know, I have learned that everybody might want my seat one day. I might have to give it away. And as good leaders, that's my job. My job is to train you, empower you, give you all the tools that you need so that you can take my seat. Anybody want my seat? Yes. You may look at me and say, no, I don't want that seat. But you know what? It's a really, really, really cool seat. It didn't used to be that cool seat because I have to tell you that I didn't see my potential. I didn't see that I could be a leader. I lived in Texas all those years ago, and I have to tell you, I gave in to those sad country songs. Those really sad country songs where I had my own little pity party, and I actually have one here. I'm going to sing for you today. I don't sing, but I'm going to share it with you today because it's a song that changed my life, and it was a song by a young woman with a disability, also in a wheelchair, who loved country music. Her name's Denise Donato, and she lives in New York. And Denise said this, and I'm going to read it to you because I don't sing, remember? She said, my life's too good to be a country song. She said, I'm much too happy for that. I've got a job I like and a car that runs and friends who love me back. I may be sitting in this chair, but you won't catch me feeling down. See, my life's too good to be a country song. At least the songs I know. I had to change my inner song. I had to change my song to a song of leadership, to a song of rolling, as you saw. And as the disease progressed, and as I even this year took medications where I had memory loss, where I had word loss, where I couldn't turn over in the bed unassisted, where I needed help, where some days I can't even feed myself or do that cool little thing y'all were doing with your fingers because I can't get my hand up to my nose. I had to learn other ways, and I had to learn ways that I could lead from where I was. And I had to learn that I could sit in this chair and I could look at this chair and say, sitting in this chair could be a death sentence, living to die. Or I can choose dying to live and take the ride of my life. What do you think I did? <laughs> dying to live, took the ride of my life, and here I am as a great, you know, as a leader. As a leader in this country. Oh my goodness, really? I had to reach deep inside. I realized I could steer just like I'm steering this wheelchair up here from wherever I was. I had to learn that there are driving forces in each of us, gifts and talents that we need each and every one of us to tap and each and every one of you to help us tap for all of our people and all of their abilities. I had to relearn to drive. I had to tap into my inner drive. And I say this, where there's a wheel, there is a way to lead. <laughs> it's tapping the driving forces and, and looking at, you know, three essentials to leadership. They came out in my platform as Miss Wheelchair America, and they were find your courage, share your vision, change the world. Yeah, I hear you say, find your courage. You have your courage? Excellent. I'm glad to hear it. You know, I didn't. I didn't. Of course. I like this guy's a leader over here for sure. Of course. I didn't have my courage. Thank you. Good leaders say thank you and say they appreciate the people that they work with. Thank you so much. But courage, I didn't have it. I guess the cowardly lion didn't have it either. He had to get it. I had to figure out what courage was. And I think Aristotle says it best where he says, I think courage is one of the underlying principles of values of leadership. We also look at an underlying principle of sales. It's an underlying principle of so much. But how do we get it when we don't even believe that we have it? How do we get it? How do you get it? I remember that there were people that surrounded me that gave me courage. And that's what great leaders do. My grandmother used to sit in a big orange chair in my living room. And I went to Texas Scottish Rite Hospital up the, up the road from here as a child. And I went to physical therapy all the time. And every time I went home and I was in the living room trying to walk and stand up, my grandmother would sit in that big orange chair. And every time I fell down, 
My mother would say, let her stay down there, Nani. Let her stay down because she needs to be able to grab everything and reach up and get up on her own. And every time I fell down and got up again and had my hands on that table, my grandmother sang a song. There she is, Miss America. <laughs> and years later, if you saw in my bio, I became Miss Wheelchair America. My grandmother had the vision for me all those years ago. And I ask you as leaders yourselves to have that vision for yourselves and for everyone that you work with. And to reach out to those people in your life that can support your vision and support the visions of others in your workplace. They need you. We need you. It's very, very important. As a leader, it means acting in the face of fear. Acting in the face of fear. It means reaching deep inside of you for the strength to overcome. Gandhi said it. It's not about the strongest person in the room. It's about indomitable will. Indomitable will. As a leader, your job is to tap into that indomitable will. As somebody who wants to become a leader, it's to tap into that indomitable will and help people become who they need to be in the workplace. Help them tap their courage to encourage them, just like my nani did to me. It's your job to put courage inside of people. And the only way I knew to find my courage was to get out of my own head. And I had to figure out one thing, and I'm going to ask you to help me figure it out here today with Eric. I had to ask, what in the world was standing in my way of becoming a great leader? Eric, are you ready? Sure, sure yeah. He's always I'm ready. I'm interrupting you, so why, why don't we ask it, it? Make it a personal question to people. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. Yeah? Absolutely. So personal the, question. Go the, ahead. Yeah, the question is, what's standing in, in the way of you going to the next level of being a leader? What is that? That is a person. Is, that, is it a wheelchair whose power doesn't yeah? rise to the occasion of standing <laughs> up? <laughs> Is it someone in your office? Is it a boss that gets in the way? Is it a gatekeeper? Or is it something deep inside yourself that you have yet to reconcile? Is, is it offensive to ask people to what's, what's keeping them back from going to the next level? Does that sound offensive? I think it's the coolest thing to do. You know what, Eric, we do? Yeah. I work in the federal government. We have brown bag lunches with leaders. Yeah. There are brown bags on your table. Pick them up real quickly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pick, pick, pick them up real quickly. Pick them up. On those yeah. brown bags, I need you to do something, and I need you to do it real quickly. This is not a brown bag lunch with the leader. You guys already <laughs> had lunch, but I've got a brown bag. On that brown bag, you write the one thing, two things, three things quickly that are standing in your way of being the best leader you can possibly become. Write them on that bag. And I mean fast. <laughs> we got a time clock running here. What are they? Think deep, think hard. Don't think too hard. It might be right there on the surface. Write it down. And as soon as you've written it down... We're going to do a ritual. Now, I'm going to let you be the timer. Good. Eric, I'm seeing some smiles with these bags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're saying over here. We keep the bags personal. We, no, we're not going to share these, right? No. No? Well, you know what? If somebody wants to share, Eric, we might. Yeah, okay, you're right. But whenever you're, right. you're ready to go yeah. the next step, Eric, I'm ready too. Yeah? You finished, guys? Yeah? Okay, good. Well, you know what you did uh, when you was... Uh, what your father did when you were young, and there was a back, right? <laughs> what did he do? What did he do? Right? So that's what we're going to do. It's going to be a... Eric said, blow it up! <laughs> and sometimes there's a lot of hot air inside of us standing yeah. in the way of us becoming the greatest That is the little, the little ritual that we're going to do. And we're going to do it all together. It's going to create a hell of a lot of noise here. <laughs> so we're going to destroy that... Is keeping you from becoming a... <laughs> yes? Wait, 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 yeah. Yeah! yes! <laughs> did, did everybody pop their bag? Yeah. I just need one person. I just need two people, actually. Two people. You just released what was standing in the way of you being a great right. leader. Right. You just added some pop to the whole leadership experience. Did you like it? Yeah. 
Was it fun? Do you feel it? <laughs> I need two people to share what was standing in their way of right. being the greatest leader they can possibly be. Two people. Yep. Two people. Yep. I see a hand over here too, Eric. Whenever okay, you're ready, yep. there's one right yep. over here. Okay, come. Stand up, please. Stand up. Yep. The camera's there. Well, <clears throat> I'm the Lebanese ambassador to Mexico. In one word, I say what is uh, really making me... Uh, very uh, hard to reach what I need to reach is oppression. I am oppressed by the people who are living in a society that is still under uh, the influence of certain uh, beliefs that uh, would not allow a human being to appraise and to reach his goals. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Gosh. Oh, and he's, give him a hand. Yeah. Give him a hand. He's, He's got a lot of work to do, and he's taken a leadership position to help those who are oppressed and those who have a lot of need to lead and leadership in their paths. So thank you for doing that, and he needs a lot of other leadership behind him to make it happen. Okay, another one. One other yeah. one. Another one. Raise your hand, please. Who wants oh, to share yep. their leadership? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's ready. Look at that. Hi. This is higher. Thank oh. you. This is very short. Only me. That's my answer. Only me. Oh my goodness, give him a hand for that. The only person standing in his way of becoming the greatest leader he can be, you know, is him. And I need both of you to come up here because I have something special for you. A great leader rewards performance. Come on up. And when we say we reward performance, what they're going to get here today, um, this is a ball marker from the golf course. It's something very, very small, but how much do we know when something's very, very small, even our smaller leaders, they can have a great impact. A ball marker has a pretty big impact. Am I correct on the golf course? My understanding is yes. Yes, absolutely. I'd like to give you one of those as well. Thank you guys for coming. I've actually got two more, I think three more ball markers out there somewhere, and Alejo is going to pass them out. Any one of you that raises your hand that thought you had something incredible inside to share when you popped your bag, he's going to give you one of those ball markers. As you can see, it's important. It's important to dig deep inside and take out from within all those things that would stop us from being a great leader. I had an incredible, incredible, incredible experience. I was on one stage one day in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And I know, yeah, Green Bay, Wisconsin, I, we have Green Bay Packers fans in here, don't we? I heard something about the NFL earlier, and I have to be careful because I am in cowboy country, and I do live in D.C. with the Redskins, and I know those Eagles are somewhere out there in Pennsylvania, but I'm not going to claim ownership of any team, but what I'm going to share is that I got the opportunity to give a speech in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And giving that speech in Green Bay, Wisconsin, the CEO, former CEO of the um, Green Bay Packers, Bob Harlan, was there. And Bob Harlan was there when he heard me speak and come up to the dais. And the next day, Bob Harlan did something for me as a CEO that I will never, ever forget. I am the, the, the young girl who never had the opportunity to participate in physical education. I am the young woman who never thought it was even possible to go into a stadium, to enjoy a stadium, because years ago they weren't accessible. But the next day when I was giving my workshop, Bob Harlan came up to me and offered me the opportunity to tour Lambeau Field. They came and got me. And I met Bob Harlan at the field. I can't tell you what it felt like to go out onto that field with that great leader that had seen that team through so many, so many wins. He took me through the players' tunnel and out onto that grass, that sacred ground. And on that sacred ground where I made wheelchair tracks, <laughs> I was scared. He, he, he looked at me and he said, this is the, you know, right at the spot where Bart Starr scored the winning touchdown in the Ice Bowl in 1963. And there I was on that field. And he pointed around the room, the stadium. And I saw Vince Lombardi's name up there. And Vince Lombardi is another one of our greats, another one of our great leaders. And Vince Lombardi says that great leaders are not born. They are made. And on that field that day with Bob Harlan, I realized that regardless of all the things that I couldn't do, that I was made to do something great. I was made to do something great.
Bob Harlan, took me to the sidelines and he said, do you know what we do in Lambeau Field when we score a touchdown? What do we do? The Lambo Leap, absolutely. And he said, come on, Juliet. He said, do you, can you, you, you want to do your Lambo Leap? Oh, my gosh, would I love to do my Lambo Leap. And again, thinking about this wheelchair and its technology, and if I could raise it up, I was like, I don't know if that's possible. But it didn't matter because Bob Harlan put his hands around my waist, and Bob Harlan said, come on, Juliet, let's leap. And on the side of the stands, he held me up. And I did my Lambo leap. And on that day, not only did I feel like I had scored a winning touchdown, I scored an incredible, magical moment that I will never forget with a leader that taught me how I can help others take their leaps. What is your Lambo leap? What is your Nobel Peace Prize that's sitting inside of you? What is it that you haven't done yet? Think about it. On that field, on that day, I realized that I had so much more to do and that there was absolutely nothing standing in my way. I went and gave the best I could in a competition to become Miss Wheelchair America. It wasn't a beauty pageant. It was all about empowerment. Leadership is not about power. It's about empowerment. I didn't think I would win that competition. And I did and got the opportunity to speak on behalf of 54 million people with disabilities around the world. I realized deep inside myself when I didn't think as a leader, I had a voice. I hated myself. I hated my body. I hated everything about my disabilities. In Texas, I used to wear so many clothes. I was so hot. I didn't want you to see me. I had turtlenecks up the ear and the eat. I had to get out of my own head and become the leader that I was supposed to be. It took people like you and champions in this room to help me make all the leaps it's taken to get to this point. I encourage you, again, to think about your leap. I don't know what it is. I hope you come up and you tell me what it is afterwards. But the one thing that I do know is that Bob Harlan then took me up the elevator to the room that overlooked the 50-yard line. And when he took me off that elevator, I realized I had made it to the top. The top as a leader in Washington, D.C. And now it was up to me. From that elevator on the top, to remember how I got there, and to remember all of those people along the way that it helped me make my leap. And it was time for me at the top, and I'm going to ask all of you to do this for me. When you get to the top, be sure, when I ride the elevator up, or someone else of all abilities rides that elevator up, that when we let the elevator go back down, that I remember, that you remember, to pay it forward. When that elevator door opens, will you be the one to open it for the next leader, regardless of their abilities? Will you be the one to hold the elevator door open? Will you? Will you? I thank you today for listening to me. I thank you for allowing me to let me be not just a voice amongst leaders, a leader amongst voices. And I ask you, and I hope today that you have tapped your big wheels. And with me, will you keep the big wheels a turning for everybody else who needs to become a leader? Will you? Thank you very much. You rock, I roll.